Hello everyone. Our topic today is cell diversity and classification. At the end of the discussion, you will be able to recognize the diverse size and shape of the cell, relate the size and shape of the cell to its function, and categorize different cell types and give examples and functions. Cells are found in different organisms, and each organism has its special cells depending on its species. However, cells are very diverse in size, shape, and their internal structure, and this applied to cells found in the same organisms. This figure shows examples of how diverse human cells can be. Cell diversity arises during the development of the nervous system, and this diversity of cells is influenced by their roles and function within the organism's body. Cells have different shapes due to appropriate function. Fibroblasts are large, flat, elongated, or spindle-shaped cells possessing processes extending out from the ends of the cell body. Red blood cells are biconcave to increase surface area for oxygen transport, and epithelial cells are cuboidal for lining and secretion. Myocytes, muscle fibers or muscle cells, are long tubular cells and have the responsibility of facilitating movement of an organism. Fat cells form storage of nutrients. Irregular shapes of macrophages are for fighting the diseases. Nerve cells gather information and control body functions. And sperm cells and egg cells are for reproduction. Cells are different both in shape and size. At 0.1 to 5 micrometers in diameter, prokaryotic cells are significantly smaller than eukaryotic cells, which have diameters ranging from 10 to 100 micrometers. The small size of prokaryotes allows ions and organic molecules that enter them to quickly spread to other parts of the cell. Similarly, any waste produced within a prokaryotic cell can quickly move out. However, larger eukaryotic cells have evolved different structural adaptations to enhance cellular transport. Indeed, the large size of these cells would not be possible without these adaptations. In general, cell size is limited because volume increases much more quickly than does cell surface area. As the cell becomes larger, it becomes more and more difficult for the cell to acquire sufficient materials to support the processes inside the cell because the relative size of the surface area across which materials must be transported declines. Complex unicellular organisms represent one evolutionary pathway. An alternate pathway has led to the evolution of multicellular organisms in which different activities are conducted by different types of specialized cells. Specialized cells are formed by a process called differentiation. A fertilized human egg, for example, will progress through a course of embryonic development that leads to the formation of approximately 250 distinct types of differentiated cells. Some cells become part of a particular digestive gland. Others, part of a large skeletal muscle. Others, part of a bone, and so forth. The pathway of differentiation followed by each embryonic cell depends primarily on the signals it receives from the surrounding environment. These signals, in turn, depend on the position of the cell within the embryo. As a result of differentiation, different types of cells acquire a distinctive appearance and contain unique materials. 
Despite their many differences, the various cells of the multicellular plant or animal are composed of similar organelles. Now, I will run down examples of the diverse cells I was talking about. We have examples of differentiated animal cells. First, we have the skin cells. Skin cells of animals are categorized in two, and those are keratinocytes and melanocytes. Keratinocytes here have a big number in skin comprising 90% of all skin cells and is responsible in production of protein known as keratin. Melanocytes, here is an example, is responsible for melanin production and melanin is responsible for skin color determination. That is why some people do have black skin color, some would have brown, light brown, and things like that. We also have muscle cells. Myocytes, muscle fibers, or muscle cells are long tubular cells and have the responsibility of facilitating movement of an organism. Muscle cells are classified into three types. Cardiac muscle cells, here. Smooth muscle cells and skeletal muscle cells. Skeletal muscles are striated and has voluntary function. Smooth muscles are non-striated and has involuntary function. Cardiac muscles are striated and has involuntary function. Blood cells are classified into three categories. The white blood cells, which are the army of the body fighting against infections and diseases. The red blood cells to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. And the blood platelets responsible for blood clotting mechanism. We also have the nerve cells, which are also known as the neurons, and they are known as the basic and main cells in the nervous system. We also have the fat cells. These are also called adipocytes or lipocytes. They are responsible in storing fats and lipids, which provides energy to the animal's body. We also have the bone cells, comprising four types of cells, the osteoblasts, osteoclasts, osteocytes, and osteoprogenitor or osteogenic cells. These are inner cheek cells. These cheek cells are epithelial cells that line the interior surface of our mouths. Now we also have the examples of plant cells. The onion cell or the onion epidermis are frequently used by biologists to study because they are readily available and their cells provide a clear view of all the basic characteristics of plant cell structure, such as the nucleus, like this one here. And also, of course, it is also showing the cell wall in here. Another example of plant cells are the potato cells. Potatoes are modified underground stems used for carbohydrate storage. Starch is stored in organelles called ameloplast which is visible under microscope after staining the potato with iodine, just like what is being shown in this figure. We also have the Elodea leaf cell. Elodea is a genus of submerged aquatic plants used in aquariums or aquaria. It is usually used to observe cell structure and cytoplasmic streaming because it has thin, straight leaves. We also have here examples of unicellular cells. Best examples of this are actually the protist and the bacterial cells. So classified as prokaryotes, bacterial cells can either be gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria.
And that's all for today. Our next topic will be ultrastructure of the cell. I hope you watch out for our next lecture video. Thank you for watching.